But I'm riding on my bike and I'm trying to get to the store to buy milk. And I was going fast. Is it working? Yeah, I'll just talk like this. And so I'm riding on my bike and it started to rain. And this is in Salzburg. And there's a lot of tourists in Salzburg. And a lot of tourists, they rent cars that they don't know how to drive. This was like a Landewagen. And anyway, I'm in the bike and the bus lane. And I'm going straight, trying to get to the store to get milk. And this SUV hits me. And I, it's even in my mind right now, I'm flying. I'm l and I land on my feet and then on my bum. And then the first thing that comes to my mind is I should tweet this. <laughs> <laughs> so, because it's like, I don't know whether it's, a, I don't think that would be a normal reaction for normal people. But because of this is, this is the lifestyle that I live, that I, I, for me, sharing knowledge and sharing experiences is such a part of my life. But then we have to step back and think, there are, there are many people in this world that don't have this opportunity. And that, that's what I would like to share with you today is uh, ideas that accessible knowledge is a human right, and this is something that we all should be working towards. And not only that, I believe there is a solution which will help exponentially bring this reality, and that's through mobile technologies. So that's my argument, and then I will end with another story. So, this is working. So we, we're all off this planet we call Earth. And on Earth, we do have certain rights which we believe are inalienable. And the Universal Declaration of Human Rights clearly states in Article 19 that everyone has the right to receive and impart information and ideas through a media, through any media, and regardless of frontiers. And quite clearly, we are living in this age in which we have the network technologies and we're, we're developing a culture in which we're able to bring this reality about. In uh, Shoghi Effendi, in the World Order of Baha'u'llah, he wrote this quote, a mechanism of world intercommunication will be devised, embracing the whole planet, freed from national hindrances and restriction, and functioning with marvelous swiftness and perfect regularity. This was written in 1936, before the internet that we know. Now, the internet that we know, this is a beautiful picture because it shows sort of this network uh, metaphor, but this is an actual picture of symbolism of the network society we live in. We have 1.8 billion internet connections in our world today. Approximately 3.4 billion are the number of people with mobile devices. That's almost half of the world's population, which is 6.8 billion. If you want to get into statistics, it's 6.97, but... Now, the mobile device will be the primary means of connection of the internet. This is where I come to this argument. If we want to create accessible knowledge, um, we have the technology, we have the infrastructure. And this is supported by data from the ITU. Look, it's, this is mobile cellular telephone subscriptions. It's skyrocketing. And, and not just in more developed areas, but in lesser developed regions. This is where it's making the most impact. But I firmly believe, and a friend of mine, Brian Rieger also, that it's about people, not the technologies. And I think this is, this is the point I want to bring to you today, is that, yeah, we have the infrastructure, we have the technologies, but have we really developed the culture as people to create this uh, accessible knowledge? So. The future of knowledge access will be through projects like the one laptop per child, which will support lesser developed regions or, or those who don't have the access, who don't have the Twitter accounts, who can simply send a message to their friends quickly after something happens. By the way, what was interesting is that I got a lot of responses. And after the accident, I actually texted a friend of mine who happens to be here. And uh, she was busy at the moment, but I was able to talk to her later. But I also got about 10 different messages from people from different parts of the world. So that's just the contrast from this region, where you probably are, are grateful to have an even internet, and to someone who's hypermobile, hyperconnected. Mobile is driving access. I, I just can't, I cannot emphasize that more. 
And what's something uh, really comes straight to my heart is that the future is already here. We have the infrastructures, but it's not evenly distributed. And in this picture, whether you look at it as a picture of this is where electricity distribution is, or you can look at it as a metaphor that those where the light airs is where knowledge is being shared actively, and those where it's dark is where knowledge is latent and the potential is there, but it just doesn't have the ability to be accessible. And this is what I want to share. So what can you do? What can we do? Um, this comes to my second story. When I was returning yesterday from London, I, I, I travel. I try to travel on the budget and try to stay in places where uh, it's affordable. But also, it's also part of my philosophy to my journey or my travels are learning experiences. And it's through these experiences we acquire knowledge where we can share with others. And I was returning and I realized as I got to the door of the apartment I'm staying in Vienna, I didn't have my keys. But I also realized that the batteries of my mobile, well, multiple mobiles were all dead. So I was, for a few moments, thinking to myself, now I'm disconnected. I'm like this picture here. I'm somewhere here. <laughs> and and uh, of course, living in Vienna, you, you could actually ask someone to borrow a phone. But I wanted to take this experience and, and think about it for a moment. Now that I'm disconnected, what is it that's really valuable in my life? So the first thing I thought, instead of tweeting, I'm knocked out, I, um, I went to a taxi and I started talking to a gentleman. And it was almost like a relationship or a friendship started. And then, you know, I told him what happened and he explained, ah, oh, it's no problem, no worry. You can borrow my phone. I'll take you where you need to go. And he was very kind. And then I realized that maybe the technologies are, we're too dependent on this, but because people are what we're supposed to focus on, we tend to forget that. So back to what you can do. Think of knowledge access as truly a human right. And then reevaluate how you approach, how you share ideas. I mean, everyone here today, we're actually privileged to be here in some ways. And hopefully, the, uh, the many amazing ideas that we've experienced here will be shared in those dark regions everywhere in the world and help inspire each other. So back to this amazing picture of this planet we all live on. If I had to say one thing, it's that if we don't consider knowledge as a human fundamental right, then why are we trying to spread these ideas if we can't share them with each other? And I'd like to end it on that note because I think uh, that's why we're here.